Oh. Everything feels feels so good. Look, look here. The underwear. Better than flower bags, I know. <laughs> I never had silk before. You'll catch cold. Father and I want tomorrow to be a good day for you. Joanna, wedding day you'll always remember. I will. I know I will. Well, when you're alone with Steve tomorrow at night, Don't expect too much. He's the nicest boy I ever met. <sighs> that helps. <laughs> Mama. Hmm? There is one thing I don't understand. When I have a baby, if I have a baby, well, how is it born? Oh, you'll manage that. Everybody does. Now you better get to bed. Go. Go run, run. She's my own flesh and blood. We're going to let her keep the four hundred dollars. Barbara. After all, it's hers. Her father left it for. We'll just manage to pay our debt some other way. Hmm? <laughs> Making money, you see, is a gift. Like the ability to play the piano or do mathematics. It has nothing to do with how hard you work or save or gamble. It has nothing to do with luck. <coughs> it is in you. Part of you. Yes, yes. Rich people get rich because they know how to do it. Just like we know how to work in a factory or cut hair, Mr. Chanel. Henry, you're a damn Bolshevik. Socialist? Yes. Always been a socialist, always will be. Well, don't let me rush, Henry. See how you like it there with your commissars. There are socialists in every country of the world, including mine. Well, this is the richest country there is right here. The best place God ever made. Yes. Where seven out of ten American families live on less than 2,000 bucks a year. Where'd you get those figures? On one of your Bolshevik magazines? And 200 companies own more than half the wealth of this entire country. Is that right? I ask you, is it right that a handful of people should own nearly everything? 
I figure this is the only country where a man who talks like you could ever even get a job. Oh, why are we so stupid? To take the crumbs off the table? When are we going to wise up and take what's ours? And when are we going to stop giving everything and getting nothing? See, I give everything. And I'm proud I give everything. I'm proud of you. I don't want to fight you, my friend. It's not you I want to fight. Just like your kind wouldn't fight in the war. Oh, you never fight. But you enjoy what we win for you, don't you? You never fight. Good man. We win for you. Come go. Let's 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 go. Let's
yourself to be one of that small group of hopefuls half a century ago. Now Mr. Edison calmly waits as the old pump completes its work of creating a vacuum in the crude bulb. He waits. He waits. We wait. Now Mr. Edison is ready to test the bulb again. He places the wires against the lamp. It does not burn. But evidently the test is satisfactory. He continues work. Now the lamp is ready, as it was ready then, to meet the crucial test. Will it burn? Or will it flicker and die, as so many previous lamps had died? Ladies and gentlemen, you can hear a pin drop in this room. It lights. May the light of peace and prosperity forever burn over America. There are certain planets exerting their influence over susceptible groups who will influence the market. I see tomorrow as a dangerous day for the market. I see a sharp decline, a day of great danger, with the moments of greatest peril, the moments of destruction, occurring in a period shortly before noon. Bill Leroy? Boy, Bill. I'm sorry. What's our status? It's a calamity. Leroy, we put a load of money on GM yesterday before the break. There's a God in the heavens, and he is repaying us for our sins. Cut the sanctity, Leroy. We have to make a decision. Shall we give it up? I can't. My father would die if he found out. We've got to extricate ourselves somehow. We've got to get even. Get out. There isn't any way out. We have to go ahead. No. There's no alternative. There must be. There isn't, Leroy. We have to go ahead. Do whatever you please. <laughs> Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, Mr. Benson. How is the bride? Just fine. I got Steve off to work right on time this morning. How does Steve get along living with your folks? Okay. We have our own room and we pay rent. Oh, that's good, Joanne. That's good. These are for your folks. Thank you. What are all those? Margin calls. Oh, what's that? Has to do with the stock market. Oh, what about it? Well, when you buy a stock on credit, you borrow money from your broker. Well, that's all right if the price goes up. But if it goes down, then the stock isn't worth what the broker paid for. You've got to pay back part of the loan. That's called covering the margin. What if you haven't got the money? And the broker sells your stock and you lose everything. Terrible. That's the way the system works, Joanne. Well, what happens to the broker? Yeah. He collects his commission and comes out fine. 
Unless, of course, he's been gambling, too. I have to go. Bye-bye, Joanne. Bye, Mr. Benson. Uh, the car is ready, Mr. Block. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Charles. A little bit of a hurry this morning. Yes, sir. Good morning, dear. Good morning. Well, nice to see you can still smile. And why not? Oh, come on, poker face. You're in the market up to your lapels, and it's dropping. There is absolutely nothing to be concerned about. It's only a fluctuation. It's only money. I am not in any difficulty. You're lying. That is no way to talk to your father. Have a nice day. Here are those other reports, Dale. Mm. There's everything ready. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it's quite a coincidence. In what way, sir? Twenty-two years ago to the day, to the day, the panic of 1907, I sold short, the market dropped, and I made a quarter of a million dollars. And those were real dollars, I can tell you. And now it's October 24th again, and my stomach tells me to jump in. The market's going to drop again. But my brain tells me to hold back just for a little longer. Miss Walsh, can you give those to the police, please? How many today? Only 12 threats. 12 people threatening to blow out my brains if I sell short and force the market lower. Are you certain we're ready? Good. Good. It's all set? Okay. I want you to stay here near the rostrum throughout the day so I can find you at all times. I understand, sir. I only hope it will not be necessary to close the exchange. I said nothing concerning the closure. Yes, sir. I'll be ready for me. Yes, sir. like a bat out of hell. Jail, everything's going up like crazy. 13,000 shares of Packet up 3.25, 20,000 shares of Kennecott up 11 bucks, and Claire up, Standard Brands up. Everything's up. No, no, not up. Not for long. Boys, listen to me. She's going to bust. I know it. I can feel it. The market is going to bust. We're going to jump in now. Right now. If you'd have him call me just as soon as he comes. Yes. Thank you. I'll be home by two at the latest, Mother. I'm just going to have lunch with Sylvia. Something the matter? I don't know. It's probably trivial, but your, your father always calls me before noon to discuss if we're going to have lunch together or dinner plans, that sort of thing, and... Today he hasn't called, and the office doesn't seem to know where he is. Oh, Mother, it's ridiculous to be upset if he's a little late. I know. 
Why hasn't he called? He always does. Well, he's probably at his broker's. The market's going crazy today. Who is his broker? I don't know. He never discusses those business affairs with me. Well, I'm sure he's fine. It's just that kind of day. Of course. I know. Why don't I stay here with you? We can gossip. That isn't necessary. Oh, no, I'd like to. We haven't had a chance to talk for a long time. Hello. Oh, Morty. Morty, are you all right? Well, of course I was worried. <laughs> yes, I'd love to have lunch. Just give me, give me about five minutes, shall I? like hundreds. Too many. Bye. Good afternoon, Mr. Vargo. I see you got a telegram. Yeah. I'm much afraid to open it. They're calling some more margin. I'm cleaned out. I am sorry. <sighs> Seems so easy. You buy on credit, pay 10% down, owe them the rest, and then when the stocks go up, that's when you make your money. And they weren't ever supposed to go down, Henry, never down. I know. Well, GM stocks were supposed to be safe. Good, safe stocks. I, I bought them because I, I trusted them. I worked there for years. I spent my whole damn life in that place, and now there's nothing left. Nothing. Winston Churchill of England is in the visitor's gallery now. I'm aware of that fact. And you want me to ask him to leave? Yes, the reporters, the spectators, Mr. Winston Churchill. Everybody up there, I want out of here at once. Yes, sir. Mr. Mitchell, sir, can I help you? I damn well wish you could. We have just conferred. We have decided to support the market. What precisely do you want me to do? You will place buy orders on our behalf. You will bring the prices up, Richard. Well, how much money will I have for the job? One hundred million dollars. Perhaps as much as two hundred million if it is necessary. I understand. Anything else? Begin with steel. Support the price of steel and force it up. Last bit from Steve. 
195. All right, as the broker for the House of Morgan, I'll take 10,000 shares at 205. I said 10,000 at 205. Yes, Mr. Whitney. Yes, yes, yes. The market staging a comeback. GE's at 308, Steel's 206. We are over two million dollars down. We'll never recoup, not ever. We have nothing to lose and everything to gain by going on. I'm talking about turning ourselves in and trying to avoid prison. We have nothing to be afraid of. Even if we're discovered, no action will be taken. Bobby's father can't afford to expose us to lose public confidence. We have only to keep our nerve and plunge ahead. You're right, David. <laughs> You're so pompous. What? <laughs> Who the devil are you to talk about pomposity? I wonder if you have lost your mind. Have we all lost our minds? <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Sir, there has been some distress selling on the market. Nothing more than that. Several financial institutions have met and discussed the situation. None of these houses is in difficulty. Our brokers report the margins are being maintained satisfactorily. The situation is due to a technical condition of the market only, not any fundamental defect. I can see new favorable configurations. I can see that tomorrow and Saturday should bring a substantial swing upwards. Yes, yes. Saturday, Friday and Saturday should be favorable. And then, and then, I can see no further. This way, ladies and gentlemen. First thing tomorrow morning, I want you to call my broker. Instruct him to sell all my holdings. Sell? Yes. At any price? Honey, it's so late. The ticker was way behind. I had to stay again. You know, on the radio today, they said it was very bad, but the outlook is for recovery tomorrow. I don't know. What about us? How do you mean, us? Well, uh, our stock, you know. It doesn't matter. J.P. Morgan won't go down. I'll have a job. My father will remain wealthy, so will yours. We'll survive. Well, then, everything's okay. Come to bed. Dream, Francis. 
the Allegheny Corporation. It's not just a holding company. It's a public service. It's just a show. It's actually owned by Morgan. Hundred twenty-nine gas and heating and electric company. Twenty percent of all the power produced in America, all ours. J. P. Morgan's. Niagara to the sea. It's only natural that President Coolidge and General Pershing, Lindbergh and Raskob and Mitchell and Bernard Baruch and 500 other American leaders could buy the stock cheaply. Why not? And I understood why that stock was sold to the brokerage houses for more money. And the brokerage houses sold that same stock to the ordinary Americans for more money yet. That's okay. That's how the system works, I told myself. But if Allegheny folds, if it folds, ordinary Americans all over this country will lose their stocks. Maybe their homes and their life savings. Well, those 500 American leaders won't. Gregory, what are you talking about? Whatever you did, whatever J.P. Morgan did, it was legal. Oh, yeah, it was legal. It was all legal. And when the brokers call for margin, when the people can't pay, when the whole system fails, we can always say, always. It was legal. But you haven't done anything. I don't know. simply of no value in terms of tourist attraction? It will be tallest. Chrysler tried to keep it secret, but his tower will be 100 feet higher than ours, there's no doubt about it. The old virus beaten us. That's not true, Governor Smith. Look, a friend, is it possible to add 10 stories to the building at the present stage of uh, development? No, I'm afraid it's impossible. Uh, gentlemen, I uh, recommend that we radically reduce our financial commitment. We can't add floors. But we can't add 200 feet in height. Oh. Gentlemen. We can attach a 200-foot mooring mast for dirigibles to the roof. Now, you think of it, gentlemen. Airships, such as the Graf Zeppelin, will tie up above the towers of Manhattan, 100 feet above the top of Chrysler's rock pile. Now, this mooring mast will be very inexpensive and will be finished within the existing timetable. With your approval, of course. Gentlemen, I want you to know that the current unsettled condition of the market has in no way affected my determination to build this great monument to the American way of life. I trust that you feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> We're with you, Jacob. <laughs> Gentlemen, the market opens in one half hour. <laughs> B 
Mr. Crawford. Are we ready? Mr. Whitney, the volume of overnight orders was unprecedented. There is an absolute mathematical limit to the speed with which the tickers can report transactions. I expect our system to function, Mr. Crawford. I work with the mechanics all night, sir. I'm not impressed by that. Is the visitor's gallery closed? Yes, sir. Stay close at hand. My friends, for five days, the market has plunged. And for five days, the minerals have been drowned, ruined. We've been on the edge of disaster, but we've kept our nerve. We managed to stay on the short side of the market. The prices have fallen, and we have collected. We've been right more often than wrong. We've kept our equilibrium. And now, my gut tells me that this will be the climactic day. We will either prosper, or we will drown. And ladies and gentlemen, I do not intend to drown. Whatever happens to every investor in every stock, in every market, in every exchange in the world, I do not intend to drown. under? I see. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> yes. I know. Yes, the margin. I know. We'll, we'll see with that. We'll... That's... Yes, sir. The margin. Well, Mr. Brown? Yes, Leroy, what is it? Sir, I would very much appreciate... It's necessary for me to request a private word with you, sir. Robert, would you have a minute? I think that Leroy is finally cracked. What's the problem, Leroy? It has to do, sir, with the market. Are you in trouble, Leroy? Yes. Of course, I suppose everyone is more or less. What's more than that, sir? In what way more? There's been, for a very considerable period of time, a continuous and very deep embezzlement of the funds of this bank for the purpose of speculation in the stock market. Deeply sorry, sir. Sorry that 
You must inform me or sorry that you are involved. Both. Sir, I am involved. Are there others? Yes. How much has been embezzled? Approximately three and a half million dollars, sir. Wait here. Now, if you please. Yes, sir. I'm terribly sorry we have to close the bank. It is going to happen. We're closing the bank right now. I'm terribly sorry. Tomorrow, perhaps. I'm sorry. We're going to have to close the bank right now. Fight this thing. I'm asking any one of you who has any knowledge of the embezzlement of this institution to please step forward. Gentlemen, as acting president of the Stock Exchange, I put to you, the Board of Governors, the following proposal. I feel, that is, I propose, that the exchange be closed forthwith. Any second to my proposal? Yours is the House of Morgan, Plan to attempt to support the market, or is there another consortium that might do so? We plan no further intervention. And it is the consensus of this board the market be allowed to, to work its will.
turning people out and lost it up. I've got my savings. So break the damn thing down. I want my money. Look at the cup. Daddy, you're home early. Did you have lunch? Daddy? Daddy, may I help you? Daddy, would you like a drink? Come on, Daddy. Don't touch me. Lost everything. It's all gone, Gloria. It's all gone. Just leave me alone. Stay away from me. Mother, I need you. Stay Daddy, stop it. Stay away from me. Stop it. 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 Please, let me die. Please. Take me with you. Daddy, we love you. We don't need anything else. 
Their mission to the moon was unsuccessful, yet they returned home as heroes. Its former astronauts tell us how they survived their Apollo 13 crisis in a special edition of 20th Century tonight. Now, join us for Time Machine, next on a and